how the prayer goes. It says, Dear Lord, it's 2016. So far in this year, I've done pretty well. Lord, I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, overindulgent. I'm very thankful, Lord, for that. But in a few minutes, it's January 1st, Lord, and I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'm going to need a lot more help. Amen. So, we have New Year's resolutions coming up, right? And uh, why is it that we, we make these great plans for the New Year's, for renewal, and uh, we break these resolutions so quickly, it's hard to keep these, uh, these different goals, these focuses, and all of a sudden we start going some other direction. We break resolutions pretty quickly. Need to get into shape, and uh, yeah, but you never find the time to go to the gym, right? You want to spend more time with your family, but dang it, you still have to go to your work and get a paycheck all the time. You want to give up some bad habits, but you just don't quite know how. There's always these barriers that are keeping us from making our goals, from keeping our resolutions. So here at, uh, at church for our sermon series, we're going to start talking about new beginnings and starting afresh again with our faith. And today I'm going to talk about prayer and what are the barriers that are keeping you from prayer, from your prayer life? What's keeping you back? So uh, let's talk about some of these barriers here today. And, and maybe we can break down some of these barriers. Maybe we can work on your New Year's resolutions of faith to grow in your relationship with Jesus in 2016. One of the things that might be keeping you back is knowing what to pray for. And so you might wonder, I don't know what I should say. What are the right words? Well, here we go. Scripture gives us the words. Number one, Jesus tells us, pray like this, and he gives us the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. At the end of the service, we're going to pray that together. So if you ever wonder, um, what should I pray in this situation, the Lord's Prayer is right there. It covers everything, from forgiveness of sins, to meeting your needs, to uh, letting God's will be done in your life. The Lord's Prayer covers everything. If you want something a little bit more, look up the Psalms. There's 150 of them in the Bible. And uh, they also run all these different areas of our life. It's not all happy all the time, right? There are Psalms called laments. Laments are the types of, of Psalms and prayers where somebody pleads to the Lord cries out, is, you know, kind of angry. Did you know there are people who are angry with God in the Bible? They are. And so there's prayers of people being angry at the Lord. And if you read through the book of Psalms, there's 150 of them. And at the beginning, a lot of the first ones are kind of angry, are really, they want God to come and to change things in their lives. And they're pretty mad at God. King David was mad sometimes. The first psalms are like that, and as you keep reading through the 150, they start becoming more thankful and more uh, asking for forgiveness and then more praiseful. And as you get to the end of the 150 psalms, it is full of praise and love and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, or to the Lord um, of heaven and earth. And so uh, you can pray those psalms in all times anger or happiness. Or, if you don't know what to pray, it is okay to pray nothing. You have permission to sit in silence and pray and communicate with the Lord. Romans chapter 8 says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings, with sighs that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. When I was in high school, I had a, um, one of my close high school cousins who was in the next town over. She was my cousin, and, uh, and she just graduated high school, and she was riding her bicycle, and 
uh, wouldn't you know it, she got hit by a drunk driver and she, she died actually from that. And then I go off to college and my first roommate, we weren't all that close, but she had also had a cousin who had died and had died of cancer. And um, her and I, you know, we were fine. We got along fine, but didn't have much else in common except for that, and we got along okay. And one day I'm studying in our room, and she's off with friends, and she came running in just crying. And, uh, and her friends come in behind her and say, saying that they don't know how to help her, and and then it ended up her and me just sitting and not saying anything and just crying and praying. And there were no words because sometimes there aren't any words. But the Holy Spirit was there. And so sometimes when we don't know what to pray, it's okay to let the Holy Spirit pray for us with those sighs, those groanings. The Holy Spirit and the Father who sees the prayers of our hearts instead. So don't let what to pray be a barrier for you this year. If you don't know what to pray, let God's word do it. Let the Holy Spirit do it. Don't let that be a barrier. You might have how being a, prayer, a barrier for you. You know, I, I need to pray in a certain manner, a certain way. We need to worship in a certain way as well. Well, here's a whole bunch of different ways people were praying in the Bible, and I'm going to use some from the New Testament, but they are all, all over in the Bible, including the Old Testament. So, for example, Luke chapter 5, there's a man with leprosy. He comes and lays down, face down, before Jesus, pleading and asking God for him to be healed. This happened a lot in the Bible. Um, Old Testament, New Testament, people would just lay completely down, prostrate on the ground. Even Martin Luther still did this. He'd come before the altar, before the cross, and he'd just lay completely down. Well, maybe you don't want to do that today. <laughs> and here I'd be preaching and there'd be people in the aisles, you know, laying face down, praying. You could. We have seen it before. It's biblical. But we might fold our hands Close our eyes, bow our heads before the Lord in prayer. You might also kneel. Philippians chapter 2 says, One day every knee, knee will, every knee will bow before the Lord. And kneeling is a prayer position that people use throughout the Bible and that they still use in churches today. You'll see some churches with kneelers where somebody will kneel. You might kneel at home at your bedside uh, when you're saying your prayers at night. Kneeling is, a, is used a lot in prayer. We have kneelers. Actually, they're not in this room, but somewhere here. So if you ever wanted to come to church and pray and kneel, we have that ability to do it here. Um, you can look up to the sky. Jesus did this in John chapter 11. Jesus' friend Lazarus uh, died. And he was very close to his friend Lazarus. Uh, this is where we have the shortest verse of the Bible in John chapter 11. Uh, it says, Jesus wept. Jesus cried. I mean, that's powerful. And then Jesus prays to his Father in heaven. And he looks up to the sky. He looks up. So yeah, you might bow your head down or you might look up to your father and pray. Now, in contemporary worship, we might like a little bit of this 1 Timothy chapter 2 where it says, In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. Well, we don't always do that. <laughs> But if you look in the back sometimes when I'm back there worshiping and the lights are down, you might see me with my hands in the air worshiping the Lord. Or in Acts chapter 3, if you really want to get crazy, in Acts chapter 3 you might recognize this from an old Sunday school song where Peter heals a lame man and then the man goes uh, walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and praising God. You remember that one? And so you could go running around and jumping up and down and dancing before the Lord. King David danced before the Lord in praise and thanksgiving. There's so many different ways that we can pray. Don't let it be a barrier to you. Jesus, when he taught us how to pray that Lord's Prayer, 
He was specifically trying to get rid of the barriers of us worrying about how we pray. In Matthew chapter 6, he says, When you pray, don't be like hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in synagogues where everyone can see them. Sometimes we worry about, well, what are people seeing of me? And we worry in maybe traditional service, I can't put my hands in their air. Or we worry in contemporary, I should put my hands in the air. It's not about one way or the other. Jesus is very specific that it's about your relationship with your Abba, Father, Daddy. It's about communicating and loving a relationship with God. And it doesn't matter how. One day, this was years ago here, even in contemporary worship, um, you know, we don't look at each other. <laughs> if you're praying with your hands in the air, awesome. If you're sitting down, if you're praying with your arms down by your side, totally fine. Um, and nobody looks at one another. But one year, uh, I remember us, the worship team was up here and there was a gentleman in contemporary and he's sitting up toward the front and he sat like this the whole time and nobody else could see him but you know, we kind of could see him because he's right up front up here. And he sat with his head down like this. We thought, oh no, like contemporary worship is not his heart language. This isn't going over well. And afterwards he came up and he had a huge grin on his face. He says, that was awesome worship. And he just felt so close to God. It's just that he happened to like to fold his hands and close his eyes and bow his head because it was not about us. And it wasn't about other people around him. It was about his relationship with the Lord. And he had a wonderful worship service. And that was awesome. So awesome. And so it doesn't matter how you do it either. It's about your personal relationship with God. You might also have a barrier of when. When can I pray to God, right? Because we pray at church, we pray before meals, and we pray at bedtime, right? Do you pray anywhere else? Oh, we pray when we need stuff sometimes, but you really should only ask once because you might bother God if you pray a whole lot of times, right? So you have to be selective in your... Where did that come from? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, St. Paul asks over and over. He says, three times I begged the Lord to take away his suffering. And then the 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, never stop praying, keep praying. And in Luke 18, just in case you wonder if you can annoy the Lord, Jesus tells this ridiculous parable about a widow who has a request of the king and goes to the king and bugs him and bothers him over and over and over and over again, the persistent widow, so much so that the king ex eventually gets exasperated and says, fine, and gives in to the widow's request. And Jesus' point in this, I mean, he does it on purpose for this ridiculous story story is that never stop asking God for anything. You can't bother or annoy the Lord. There's a little cartoon that's been going around up on the internet and, uh, and it, it's kind of got a point for a little bit. It says, what if we talk to our spouse? What if we talk to somebody that we love like we talk to God? repeating ourselves all the time and telling him exactly what to do. So in this case here on this little cartoon, uh, this husband's asking his wife, babe, could you just, just pick up some milk? Babe, while you're at the store, just, just go ahead, babe. Just, just go to the milk section, babe. Just, just grab a gallon of milk and just, just place it right in your cart, babe. Just thanks, babe. Just, right? God, just, just heal me. That's just all I need. I just need you in my life, God. Just, just. It seems ridiculous if we talk to one another. But you know what? God doesn't care. Go ahead. Don't let that be a barrier saying, you know, I don't have the right words. I'm not doing it right. I must just be annoying the Lord all the time. I'm repeating myself. You can say the Lord's Prayer over and over and over again if you want. That's okay if that's your prayer language. Um, it took a few years longer uh, in my family for little ones to join our house, for us to have kids and um, children. And now we have three, and uh, two of them are one, and we hear a lot of mom, mom, mommy, mommy, mom, 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 mommy, mommy, mommy. And I have to admit, sometimes I get a little annoyed. But you know what? Not too often. 
because it is awesome to hear these little ones say, Mom, Mom, Mommy, Mommy, Mom, Mom, Mommy, Mommy. Give me milk. Give me meat. Give me whatever they want. It's awesome to have that relationship with my kids. And you are God's son. You are his daughter. You cannot annoy him. He says, call me daddy. Call me Abba, father. Cling to him. Come to him. And repeat it over and over and over again if you want. He's going to cherish that relationship with you in prayer. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, pray like this, Abba, daddy. You are his child. You can't annoy him. He's the best father <laughs> out of all of us. We might get annoyed. God doesn't get annoyed. Finally, maybe one of the last barriers for you in prayer is, and it's probably the most difficult one, it's your wants. Because oftentimes we want something from God, and so we pray for those things. And when we don't get what we want, then we stop praying. Like we start giving God the silent treatment for some reason. Matthew 21, Jesus says we can be bold in asking God anything. Matthew 21, pray for anything. Jesus says if you have faith, you will receive it. Have faith, Jesus says. And yet in 2 Corinthians 12, sometimes the answer is not what we're looking for. Because St. Paul says three different times he begged the Lord to take away his suffering. And each time the Lord's answer was, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And his answer was that Paul would be strong through Jesus Christ, not through anything here in this earth. And it's hard for us to accept that answer sometimes. Matthew 26, even Jesus, before he died on the cross, before he was crucified, he prayed to the Lord, and in the flesh, he asked the Lord to take away the cup of suffering that would happen to his body. But in the spirit, not my will, but your will be done, Jesus prayed to the Lord. He accepted this was the plan. This was the will. And it was Jesus' will as well. How do we overcome this barrier of sometimes when uh, we pray to God and the answer is no, or it's not yet, or it's just different than what we expected? Sometimes God does answer prayers. Uh, Pastor John said this last week, we have proof that God answers the prayers of the children because it was only the kids who prayed for the snow. <laughs> it wasn't us adults. Uh, but God answered those prayers of whoever that was that prayed for that snow. Sometimes God says yes. And sometimes God says a different answer. Or it looks in a different way than our wants. And so we pray that God's will would be our will. What can get us through this barrier of, of just wanting to give up praying to the Lord if he's not going to do it my way? Here are some benefits of prayer. Number one, there is a two-way relationship with our God. In 1 John chapter 4, it says, We love because God first loved us. You are his son, his daughter. He chose you. Uh, you were born into an inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ. He's not going to let anything happen to you. He's not going to let you go. But you know what it's like when you have... One of these relationships with someone you love and they don't love you back. And it's just so weird and awkward. And, uh, or somebody loves you and they're just adoring you and you're like, eh, you know, back off a little bit. And that communication isn't there. But when, uh, when the communication is happening and there's love going both ways, and there's caring going both ways. It's awesome. In your family, but it might be friends. It might be just somebody that you communicate well with. This is your God, your heavenly father. And he's the best person who's going to love you until the ends of the earth. No matter what you do in this life, the Lord is going to be with you. And he's never going to give up on you. 
And it's so much better when we have a two-way communication with the one who loves us so much. When we pray, we get daily encouragement. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances. That's hard to do in all circumstances. You know, when you're suffering, when you're in pain, to be thankful. And yet when we work on our acts of thanksgiving, I, every year I sign up to come to Thanksgiving Eve service and Thanksgiving Day service. You know why? Because a lot of the people who come on Thanksgiving Eve and Thanksgiving Day, they're not necessarily the ones um, where life is going perfect for them. A lot of people who come to Thanksgiving services at church in the middle of a week on, you know, Wednesday night, um, Life isn't perfect, and there's struggles in their life and illnesses, but they're coming with thanksgiving for what the Lord is doing. Man, it's awesome. The encouragement that happens at those Thanksgiving Eve services, um, it doesn't mean that life is perfect. It means they know the one who came to save them, to save them from their sins, to give them hope. And giving those, light, those prayers of thanksgiving is really, really encouraging to me to be around it. I love Thanksgiving Eve services for that reason. And finally, uh, prayer is a benefit because it's a renewing of our faith, a renewing of our trust in the promise that we first received from God. Romans chapter 8 says, Now we call God Abba Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we're heirs of God's glory. It's a promise for you. And as the year goes on in 2016, you're going to have some struggles and some trials. And when those struggles and trials happen and your faith might be shaken in prayer, God works with his Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith and our trust, even in those times of trial. It's encouragement and it's strengthening of our faith and our relationship with the Lord. So if you need a boost of faith in 2016, how about prayer? Now, um, just to close, uh, Pastor Tyler likes to say that if you want to ask God for patience, he might give you opportunities for patience. In the same way, if you want to grow in your prayer life and you ask God, Lord, help me with my prayer life in 2016, he's going to give you opportunities for this. So be looking for opportunities and be working on those barriers so they wouldn't be a barrier. If you're driving your car and you see an ambulance drive by, pray. I don't care where you are. What to say? Say the Lord's Prayer. Don't say anything. Just ask the Holy Spirit to help with whatever is needed. Take the opportunity as you see it. When you're with your family, if there's a sadness, pray. If you don't know what to say, say the Lord's Prayer. Um, if there's a celebration, pray. How often do we pray as celebrations? Giving thanks to the Lord. You know, we usually do that just at mealtimes, thanking the Lord. Well, let's thank the Lord at the birth of a baby. Let's thank the Lord at somebody graduating. Thank the Lord for just getting a paycheck. It's okay to thank the Lord in all times. Whatever barriers are holding you back from your, how your hands are raised in the air or not, don't let these things hold you back because the Holy Spirit isn't holding you back. So let's close by not practicing praying. Let's take an opportunity to pray with each other right now. Would you join with me?